Let's go ahead and construct a stop motion video using Photoshop. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up Photoshop and you'll go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. Photoshop is going to prompt you to open the files and you'll need to choose a minimum of two files. I'll go ahead and I'll click the Browse button. I'll navigate into the folder where I've saved my optimized files and I'm going to simply select all of the files. I can do this by selecting the first image and scrolling down to the bottom and hold my shift key and click on the last image. I'll click open. Photoshop is going to list all the files and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click OK. Now it is worth mentioning that you can choose attempt to automatically align source images. But rather than doing that, I'm going to do this a separate way so that I can show you what happens by default. As I mentioned, I'll click OK to load these in, and Photoshop's going to go through and add all of the images. Now, depending on how many images you have, it may take a few minutes in order for all the images to be added into the Photoshop document as their own separate layers. Once Photoshop has finished processing, you'll see that all the images have been added into your document. Inside my document, I have a couple of images that I don't need. You can see there's a shadow of a hand here, and I have a couple of other images that don't quite match up. They were more of my test images. It is possible to go through and just delete the layers that you don't want from the animation so that you're removing anything that is redundant or something that you don't need. You can also fix this later on, so if you don't do it right now, it is possible to do it at a later time. What I'm gonna do to begin with is I'm just gonna go ahead and create the frame-by-frame -frame animation to show you what it looks like without aligning the images to each other. In order to create a stop-motion animation, you're going to need to work with the frame animation setting. So if you don't see that, go ahead and change it to create frame animation. Click the button, and one of the layers is going to be loaded as the first layer. If you come to the wing menu over here on the right side of the timeline, you can go ahead and choose to make frames from layers. This will add in all the layers, and they will come in as their own unique frame. Now it is worth mentioning that the last layer is just a blank layer, so I don't need that. I'm going to select that, and I'll hit the trash can to delete that. The other thing that's going to happen is more than likely your frames are going to come in in the wrong order. So if we were to play the animation, you can see that it's playing backwards. To fix this, you're going to come to the wing menu and you can reverse the frames. Once you've done this, your frames will be in the right order and you can go ahead and preview and play your animation. Now the animation looks okay, but there are some issues. I have a few frames that I don't want to be part of the animation, and you'll also notice the edges of the blue portion of my image move slightly, and it is more apparent a little bit later on in my animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo and get back to prior to adding the frames to the timeline. What you'll want to do is you're going to want to have Photoshop auto align the layers. In order to do this, you're going to select all of the layers. You'll go to Edit, and you'll choose Auto Align Layers. The Auto Align Layer dialog box is going to open up, and you can specify how you want Photoshop to auto align. We're simply going to just leave it on the default, which is Auto. We'll click OK, and Photoshop is going to do its magic and fix these small discrepancies in regards to alignment. Photoshop is taking care of the heavy lifting, as for us to do this manually, it would be very time consuming, considering that we have many layers to deal with. If you do have a lot of layers, it's going to take a little bit of time in order to run this, so be prepared to wait for a period of time. I'll let Photoshop go ahead and run this feature, and then we'll talk about next steps. Now that Photoshop has finished running the auto align layers, you should see that your file is going to look a little bit different. It actually looks somewhat crooked right now, but if we test this by creating our frame animation and adding all of the layers, you'll see when I run the animation, if you look at the edges of the blue paper, they are much more in line with each other. So there's not as much visual movement as there was previously. 
I'm going to stop the animation from playing and just undo to step back. Before we can actually create our animation, we're going to need to do a few more things. Now that I've had Photoshop run through this process, I'm going to go ahead and crop my image. I'll use the crop tool. I'm going to crop in so that the edge is just going to be the blue portion of the paper. I'll go ahead and hit return to accept these changes. And once Photoshop has cropped my image, I'm going to go ahead and delete the very last layer, which is this blank layer. Then I'll go ahead and I'm going to create my frame animation. I'll go to the wing menu over here on the right and I'll click make frames from layers. As I mentioned before, when you do this, more than likely your frame animation is going to be reversed. So I'll come to the wing menu once again and I'll click reverse frames. Now the animation should start from the beginning. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to eliminate any frames that are not necessary. You can see that the fish doesn't begin to show until frame four. So I really do not need the first two frames. If you want to delete any frames, you'll simply select them and you'll click the trash can. That will prompt you to delete the frame. It is possible that you may need to go through your animation and delete any unnecessary frames. I'm just going to quickly go through my animation and make sure that everything is a frame that I want to keep. So I'll play my animation ensuring that the frames that are playing are ones that should be here. You can see that right here, there is a hand in my animation. This is another frame that I need to delete. I'll continue to play the animation. And it looks like one of my frames is discolored slightly. So I'm going to eliminate this frame as well. Now the animation looks pretty good. The next thing that I need to do is I need to determine what my frame rate is actually going to be. Typically, when you create a stop motion, your frame rate is going to be between 10 to 15 frames per second. If we were to select all of the frames in our timeline, we could go down to the bottom and we could change all of them together. If we change the frame rate to be 0.1 second, that's going to play at 10 frames per second. If I wanted my animation to play at 12 frames per second, I'm going to click Other and I'm going to use 0.08. This would give me 12 frames per second. The way that you can determine the frame rate is you use one and you divide it by the timeline delay. So one divided by 0 0.08 gives me 12. If we go ahead and play the animation now, you're going to see that it plays a little bit more slowly. And this is better for my stop motion animation. Stop motion should not play completely smooth. It needs to be a little stuttered. That's part of the style of stop motion. Once you're happy with how your stop motion animation is going to look, the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to export it. Before we do that though, I'm going to go ahead and set a hold on my last keyframe. This will hold for five seconds before the animation repeats. Since this is the ending frame on my animation, I want to have a slight pause. I'm also going to want to adjust the timing on a few of my frames. If I rewind and get to a point a little bit earlier on in the animation and play from here, you'll see that the jellyfish approaches the fish and then there's a question mark. I'm going to want to have a slight pause in this area so that the viewer will be able to see the question mark before it floats away. So I'm going to locate that frame and I'll go ahead and add a one second pause here. In addition, there is a point in time in which the jellyfish says boo. And once again, I'm going to want to pause there so that the viewer has time to take in that bit of action. So I'll just go ahead and locate that particular frame. And once again, let's change the timing to one second. Let me go ahead and advance to earlier on in the animation. We'll play and you can see what it looks like with those pauses in place. That looks much better as now the viewer has a chance to really understand what's happening in the animation. You will also notice when it gets to the end, it's going to hold on this ending frame for five seconds before it rewinds and starts playing again. This looks much better. Now my animation is playing exactly the way I want it to play. In addition, I'm going to want to save my file before I export. So I'll go to file, save, I'll navigate to where I want to save the file. I'm going to go ahead and name the file stop motion one. 
and I'll go ahead and click Save. Now I'll click File Export and I'm going to render to video. Even though it is possible for me to export this as an animated GIF, I know that the file is going to be somewhat large because I have so many frames and because the actual physical size is quite big. In lieu of that, I'm going to render this as a video file. You'll need to go ahead and supply a new name if necessary. Specify where you're going to save the file, and I'm going to change this and save it in a different location. Then you're going to go ahead and specify the format. Instead of using the YouTube preset size, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to make a high quality video. This will use the default document size. This is not a standard video size, but this is the size that I'm choosing to output. In regards to the frame rate, I'm going to reduce this down to 12 frames per second, since that is the frame rate that I ultimately want this to play. Now I'll go ahead and click Render. Photoshop will export and make the video for me. And if we open up the finalized video, you can take a look and see what this looks like as a video file. As you can see, Photoshop has a lot of tools and techniques that we can utilize to ensure that our stop motion plays just the way we want. In addition to what I've just showed you right here, because Photoshop is creating the stop motion by using layers, if there is a situation where you maybe want to touch up or add something to one of the layers, you can simply select the layer and paint on it, add text, do whatever it is that you need to do. I hope this is helpful to you and now you know how you can create a stop motion video using Photoshop.